Hi, Sagar and Samyanka. Today I'm going to explain you how to implement OSPF within the parallel to firewalls. OSPF means open shortest path first. So that is the you know dynamic routing protocol. Uh, so let me explain you the diagram here. Uh, so here we have our uh, head office. This is our head office firewall, and here, here is our branch office firewall. Let's say this is a uh, uh, BR, and let's say this is HO. And uh, in between, we have internet here. So, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to have this IPsec tunnel in between these two offices through the internet. And here, uh, behind the branch office firewall, we have a network. So, actually, our network IP is uh, IP range is 10.1.1.0 slash 24. And uh, behind head office firewall, we have another network. So, that is our head office network. So, IP range is uh, 172.16.1.0 slash 24. And, uh, uh, you know, here in this IPsec tunnel, actually, we have... Uh, two uh, IPs because normally uh, for IP sec tunnels we do not uh, it is not mandatory to have IP addresses we can just have the you know tunnel interfaces without having IPs but uh, since we are going to implement this dynamic routing protocol we are going to implement dynamic uh, dynamic routing here dynamic routing protocol we are going to implement here so that is uh, OSPF open shorter shortest path first this is the protocol we are going to implement so in that case actually we need uh, ip address within this ipsec tunnel so here what we are going to do is uh, uh, let, let me clear this first uh, so i'm going to implement uh, you know the ip network between this uh, between these two firewalls i mean within this ipsec tunnel so our ip range is uh, 192 one six eight two hundred dot zero slash thirty. So you know head of his side tunnel interface IP is one, the branch of his side tunnel interface IP is two. So this is the IPsec tunnel network. So uh, let's assume that we have uh, you know one PC within this uh, branch of his firewall, branch of his firewall network, the IP address is uh, 10.1.1.50 and uh, this is another PC uh, behind this head of his firewall so that is uh, this PC uh, the IP is let's say 172.16.1.50 and let's say this uh, branch of his uh, side PC wants to communicate to this uh, head of his side PC so this should be the communication uh, this way but in order to do that actually this head of his uh, once this uh, branch of his PC communicates to the firewall firewall should know where to send this traffic in order to access this PC because once this traffic reach the uh, branch of his firewall firewall should know this path firewall has to send this traffic to uh, head of his site uh, you know head of his firewall through the IPsec tunnel so then head of his firewall will send the traffic to the, the, the traffic to this PC. So once this uh, you know head of his PC respond responds, so that traffic is coming to the head of his firewall. And then head of his firewall should know where to send this traffic in order to reach this uh, branch of his uh, PC. So this is the response traffic. So then head of his firewall should have this routing information. So it, that means it should send this. Tra response traffic back to the branch of his site tunnel interface so actually we can do this using two uh, methods the first method is we can use static routing so initially i'm going to showcase that static and second way is using dynamic routing or in this case ospf because we are using ospf routing protocol here we have these two options uh, first i'm going to showcase first option that is static routing and second i'm going to showcase ospf okay i think uh, you got my point and you know what we are going to do so let's start the configuration now
Okay, uh, first uh, let me let me clean this uh, because otherwise you can't see these firewalls properly because actually I draw it uh, on the desktop instead of drawing it uh, on the uh, whiteboard. So let me remove this uh, because you know now this uh, you know it's a basic network. So let me go to my firewall. This is my head office firewall and this is my branch office firewall. And here within my head office firewall, actually I have this IP sync tunnel and it is connected. Uh, okay, so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to initiate a ping request from branch office uh, PC to head office PC. So let me get my branch office uh, PC here and uh, let me start command prompt. Uh, let me get my and it's better if I can get the magnifier because otherwise sometimes you can't see. Uh, uh, okay, so let me ping uh, ping 172 1.50. Okay, so let me start the ping. Okay, you can see now, uh, you know, I cannot uh, uh, ping my head of his uh, PC. So let's wait uh, for a few uh, seconds. Now you can see uh, I cannot ping, right? So what we can do is uh, I can, I uh, now I'm going to put a static route. Uh, the first method I'm going to use is static routing. Uh, I'm going to use static routing here. Uh, let's wait some time to confirm. Uh, initially I'm going to use static routing. Okay, still, uh, okay, still we have no communication, right? So let me enable the communication by using static routing. Uh, so let me uh, close this magnifier. Okay, let me log into firewall. Uh, here within the head of his firewall, uh, let's say, with, let's uh, first uh, within the branch of his firewall, I'm going to put the uh, routing here. I'm going to virtual router, default virtual router and the static routes. I'm adding this static route here. Actually, I do not have any uh, routes. So let's say HO route. Uh, and my destination should be uh, 172.16.1.0 slash 24. That is my head of his network. And my interface should be, this is my tunnel interface. That is, uh, you know, my IPsec tunnel. So because I have to uh, send traffic through the IPsec tunnel and my next stop is uh, according to my network, my next stop is 192.168.200.1. So that is my head of his site uh, tunnel interface. So that's that is the place where I'm putting this traffic. So let me click OK. OK. Now uh, I'm okay with this uh, routing. Hmm. So let's wait for this commit. Okay, so let me go back here. It should not work because actually the traffic should reach the head of his site. But uh, since I do not have a return route from the head of his firewall, I should not be able to see any uh, proper ping uh, responses. Okay, that's done. So let me go here. So see, we can't we, we can't see uh, proper response. So let me go to head of his firewall and go to virtual router and going to default virtual router static routes. Uh, here, let me put this is let's say VR uh, route branch office route. So my branch office network is 10.1.1.0 slash 24, and the interface should be the star interface that is tunnel one. And my next stop should be 192.168.200.2. So that is my branch office site uh, tunnel interface IP. Okay, let me click OK. Let me commit uh, and I'm sorry actually I have to uh, uh, let me close this window because actually I do not have any security policy I guess oh uh, yes so in that case I think no, no. what should be done okay no problem 
so what we can do is uh so let me let me put the security policy because actually even though we put the routing actually we should not be able to see this thing because it is uh, the, the, you know traffic is getting blocked so let me put uh, you know security policy here it's an issue uh, so let me refresh the window and then you know i'll showcase you know this uh, you know traffic is working fine so then after that let me remove these routes and i, I can show that the, this uh, traffic is not going to be work because of you know routing issues so then i'll implement the dynamic routing in order to make it work so i'm just putting any any row so i'm just allowing everything here any destination should be any and these things okay okay uh, let me click okay uh since we have any <laughs> role let's say any role okay let me commit let me go to this firewall and i'm going to policies uh, i'm going to add any rule uh source that is okay sorry any and the session should be any because i'm just putting this a common rule uh, because i'm not uh, you know concerning about these uh, security rules i just want to showcase how this uh, uh, you know routing requirement uh, in order to make this uh, ping work unfortunately i forgot to put the uh, rules uh, before before initiating the ping okay anyway now i should be able to see a proper ping so then i'll remove the static routing and i'll showcase that uh, without having the static routing uh, the ping should not work so after that in order to make it work i'll put dynamic routing using ospf okay let me showcase now it should work see now over let me get the magnifier uh here so now our you know traffic is working fine so let me let me you uh, know you know disable this by removing this uh, the routes i put so let me so then you can confirm you can you can get the confirmation that you know these routes are required in order to uh, you know ping uh, from branch office to head office right i'm just removing this uh, route and let me commit and then let me remove this uh, branch office route as well so then we'll uh, implement this uh, uh, dynamic routing using OSPF. Okay, I deleted that as well. Let me commit. Now uh, uh, our expected outcome should be the, you know, the our ping uh, should stop. So let's wait for this commit. I think this should, uh, it's 99 almost completed. Okay, so let me go here. Okay, this also more 99. Okay, so let me go to this PC and see. See, now uh, you know our ping is uh, ping has uh, stopped. So let me show. Okay, so see, now our ping is not working. So not, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement dynamic routing. Okay, one moment okay so uh before implementing this uh, ospf for uh, let me show you one thing so let me go to my uh, head office firewall and virtual routers and let me go to this section so that is my uh, this uh, more runtime stats uh i want to show you this actually this is a routing table so you can see here uh, these are the routes that i have here i have one eight 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 some route because i have a static route uh, I think before the demonstration, I created that for some other uh, demo. And this is 172.16.1.0. That is my head office uh, uh, network. And this is my head office interface. And this is my, uh, actually, uh, this is Antrust interface I, uh, range, uh, network. And this is uh, my uh, interface itself. And this is the, uh, you know, this tile network uh, range. And this is my tile uh, interface ip so these are the you know routing information that i have uh, so or uh, let me let me get a screen capture here so I, I want you to compare that so after implementing this uh, dynamic routing uh, so let me get this okay we'll get these are the only information we have okay let me remove these things and uh, okay so let me close this and let me go to my uh, branch office file and let me go to runtime more stats here also we have a few information or routing information for the firewall here we have this is 10110 means actually our you know uh, 
uh, the branch network and 10.1.1.254 means our you know this interface itself uh, network interface within the firewall and uh, 192.1.0.24 means my untrust network and 192.1.200 means my uh, untrust interface IP and 192.168.200.0 means network means my IPsec tunnel network and this is my IPsec tunnel interface IP so these are the information we have so okay so then let me uh, start configuring dynamic routing so let me go to head office firewall network virtual router and default virtual router and i'm going to ospf this is uh, ospf configuration first i have to enable it and here you have to put a route id so route id means uh, just id for this purpose i'm not going to explain that much about that so i'm going to put my tunnel interface ip you can use some normally when it comes to route id normally we are using uh, something called loopback adapter interface ip but here since we don't have loopback adapter we are just putting this uh, tunnel interface ip uh, don't worry about that uh, but for this uh, demonstration this is pretty much uh, enough uh, i'm putting 192.168.200.1 and uh, here uh, i'm adding this area section we have to add the area because when it comes to ospf uh, we have to add this area area means it's a you know uh, like a domain uh, for the moment i'm just putting this uh, at because we are we have to add the area zero it is a mandatory thing you just keep that in mind so if i'm going to do the second part i'll explain everything so i'm putting area it's uh, in parallel files we have to put you know it's uh, ip address type you know we have to have four digits here uh, uh zero 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 and then type should be normal and here uh, only configuration we have to do is we have to select the interface because we have to enable this OSP within the interfaces so here I'm going to enable this uh, within this, you know, this is my uh, tunnel interface. I'm uh, enabling OSPF within this tunnel interface. That is my IPsec tunnel. And the link type should be point to point. Like type should be point to point. These are the only two, uh, you know, things I had to configure here. Let me click OK. And after that, so initially let's do that because actually initially we have to establish this ospf adjacency so i'll show that okay that's the only thing you have to do let me click ok and ok and let me commit okay and uh, still commit so let me show you something let me go to more runtime stats here let me go to ospf and let me go to neighbors you see actually at this moment we do not have any neighbors ospf neighbors so let me pause let me go to this uh, router and go to default virtual router let me go to spf and enable let me put the route id let's say 192.168.200.2 and uh, here uh, let me add the area area is uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. and the type is normal and let me go to interfaces and i'm enabling this uh, ospf within this tunnel interface and type should be point to point so that means we are enabling uh, IP, uh, you know, OSPF within this IPsec tunnel. So we are, you know, uh, making these two uh, firewalls neighbor, OSPF neighbors. So let me click OK and let me click Commit. Okay, now uh, you saw that uh, previously we did not have any neighbors, uh, OSPF neighbors. Still, we should not because since uh, OSPF is not configured in the second firewall, I mean, it's still in the commit uh, process so once the commit is done so we should be able to see ospf neighbors because these two firewalls are going to uh, make a neighbor relationship and they are going to exchange routes but here it is not going to exchange routes i have to do one thing so let me go to head of this firewall. we should be able to see these ospf neighbors uh, one moment okay let me go here ospf and neighbors see now we have neighbors so let me uh, get the magnifier and show you see we have these neighbors this is my neighbor uh, let me get my see here this is neighbor that is my branch office firewall uh, you know the tunnel ip and the route I, uh, id uh, i think you can remember that i put this route id and it says uh, the status is full this is a expected uh, status because actually when it comes to ospf neighboring relationship we have several other you know status and those 
things are intermediate status but once this neighbor relationship has been completely established our status should be full but for the moment you you, you can use uh, this uh, information but you know if i'm going to do second video i can explain everything it's a you know when it comes to voice it is a you know huge area uh, this is our area that we configured okay now we are done with that so let me go back to this uh, branch office file and show you the same thing should be there uh, so let me close it here go to branch office and here go into more runtime stats and OSPF and neighbors see now here also we can see the neighbor but the thing is actually uh, let me go to my uh, uh, let, let, let me uh, go to my head office uh, you know more runtime stats actually I, I, I saved my this information this routing information and let me check whether I have more, uh, more, more routing information here uh, let me compare it so that's why I saved it here because I want to compare it. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, here, uh, see, uh, the 888, 16. Actually, it seems that we don't have any other information or extra information, even though we, you know, establish this always with uh, dynamic routing. Because actually, my uh, what my expectation is, my head office firewall should have this uh, branch office network information, right? And also my branch office net, uh, firewall should have my head office network information. So then only these two pieces can communicate. And let me go here and uh, I can show you that here uh, still my ping is not working so in order to do that uh, let me let me draw and tell you uh, here uh, what I have to do is let me get this uh, pen here uh, uh, here I have this my head of his firewall and here I have my branch of his firewall and this is my branch of his network and this is my head of his network and this is my epsec tunnel so actually i we have now ospf uh, you know configured between these two firewalls so what i had to do is i had to tell this ospf please advertise this network i had to tell that and also here within this branch of his firewall also i had to tell the firewall or, or the ospf please advertise this branch of his network so then you know head of his network is going to advertise these two uh, branch of his uh, firewall OSP process and also the branch of his uh, OSP process is going to advertise this network to head of his firewall OSP process so actually these two networks should be advertised actually because at this moment we enable this OSP within this tunnel interfaces so we just enable and they are uh, they, because of enable, uh, that enabling so the, the this uh, ospf is established between these two files but we haven't advertised these two networks so once we advertise only they they are going to this head of his firewall is going to tell about this network to the branch of his firewall and branch of his firewall is going to tell about this network to head of his firewall so actually we had to do that so let me do this it's easy uh let me go to uh, my you know head of his firewall and let me go to virtual routers default virtual router and let me go to ospf and let me go to this uh, area zero area zero section and let me go to interfaces let me add this interface that is my either one slash two is my you know local network within head of his and i had to put uh, let's say this is should be passive passive means you know uh, this interface is just going to be advertised only i mean this network is going to be advertised through the ospf process to this uh, branch office because i'm not going to uh, establish any ospf relationship with other router firewall using this interface because if this is not act not passive this is going to establish the relationship with some other you know ospf process or some other firewall or the uh, router so i don't want that to be happen i just only want this interface network advertised to uh, my uh, OSPF neighbor. So in that case, I had to put passive. Let me click OK, click OK, and click OK. So let me do the same thing here. Go to uh, default virtual router, uh, OSPF, and area zero, and interfaces. Let me add the interface here, two and passive. That is the only thing you had to do in order to advertise these uh, two networks. Let me commit. I think I committed here, right? Uh, did I commit it? Uh, let me check whether I have any changes. No, I don't have it. Okay. Okay. So once the commit is done, I'll show you this uh, new routing table or the routing information within these firewalls. 
Okay, it's 98% completed. Uh, let's wait. Okay, it's done. Okay, let me go to head office firewall. And since I have this, you know, screen capture, I can, you know, show you the difference. So let me go to more runtime stats. Okay, here. So let me get the screen capture and compare. Yeah, uh, uh, let me get this uh, in here. We have 888, it's fine. We have 888 here. Uh, and here, this is 172.16.1.0, but here we have only one. This is my branch office local network. So it is advertised here. 10.110.24. Because other things are same, but except, uh, you know, but, but this uh, 10110 was uh, not there in previous uh, screenshot. See, we do not have yet. It is not included here. We actually, this, you know, this is branch office network, which is advertised here. So that means this head office firewall has this information using OSPF. So let me, uh, you know, show you uh, this uh, tag. See, it says AOI. So A means active, O means OSPF. I means uh, uh, it was on, also actually uh, intra area, actually, not zone. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. AO means active OSPF. So that is a routing type then because previously it is AS means static and C means connected and H means host. Now this is OSPF route which is learned through this uh, OSPF process. So then let me go back to my you know branch office firewall and show you uh, the same thing. Uh, we should be able to see 172 network because actually behind the head office firewall we have 172 network that should be learned by the branch office firewall. We go here and here uh, 172 network. Actually, unfortunately, I can't see that. Uh, 1010. Why? What can be the reason? Uh, 172 network is not here. Why? So let me go here into the head of his firewall and uh, uh, let me go to OSPF and let me open this and go to interfaces. Uh, it is there. It is uh, enabled and uh, enable is fine. I think I think I did not commit I guess let me commit I think I, I missed the commit I guess uh, let's wait for the commit I think that should be the reason because actually uh, I think we are done uh, we are done with the configuration so let's wait for this commit I think you got the idea right so we exchange this information through OSPF uh, because otherwise we have to put static routes uh, okay so it's almost completed uh, let's wait 99 okay it's done so let me go to branch office i should be able to see that network here yeah it's here because actually previously i i, I forgot to because i checked i thought that i committed so here see let me get my pen and uh, show you see we have 172 172 network advertise here and also it says uh, active and OSPF it is learned through OSPF and it says an XOP is 201 so this is the dynamic routing protocol so then let me uh, check my whether my ping uh, works it should work now let me go to my uh, PC see now ping is working so actually uh, now this uh, OSPF process is working fine and I can have this routing information so what I can do is, uh, you know, uh, let's let's assume that I can I can demonstrate one thing, one moment. So using this dynamic routing protocols, let's say this, uh, you know, if this, uh, you know, head of this firewall, uh, you know, this uh, LAN network is going to be, let's say it's going to be down. So let's say we are, we are head of this, uh, you know, the firewall interface is going to be down. So then once it's down, this information, uh, you know, about that network, uh, within this branch of his firewall, this 172 range is going to be automatically removed. Uh, since this this is the entry, so let me get the magnifier here again. Here we have this information within the branch of his firewall about this head of his network. 
so if this uh, network is going to be down so let's say i'm going to manually down this head of his uh, you know lan interface so i'm going to put it down down okay commit so once it's down so it is going to be removed from this uh, branch of his uh, firewall routing information base so that is called dynamic routing so actually we use these things in order to you know uh, fail over things and all but here i'm not going to explain that because uh, my focus is just to how to enable ospf and the basic uh, functionality of ospf okay now almost 99 percent uh, so okay now it's done so let me refresh here so see it's down so it should be removed from here so let me uh, from the uh, branch of survival so let me get the routing information see now you can see you, we do not have any 172 network because from the OSPF process it knows that this network is down so I should not advertise it. That is OSPF. Okay, I think you got uh, you know basic idea about OSPF. For okay, thank you for your time.